Today I'm going to talk about how I made over 550 horsepower in my 2007 BMW 335i. Let's get started. <laughs> background story for you guys I actually bought this car off my friend he owned it for a year some of the pre-existing mods that came with the car were uh, JB4 it was lowered I'll actually put a photo for you guys to see how it looked um, it came with turbo smart blow valves and it came with burger motorsport intakes and so he had it for a little bit he drove it back and forth long distances he had no issues with it it was running fine keep in mind the car also had stock charge pipe stock intercooler and stock turbos I'll tell you guys why I decided to upgrade when I took ownership of the car I just felt like uh, you know I got used to the power too quickly uh, it's an amazing car it's so much fun to drive I honestly wish people can understand that they should stop being intimidated by these cars. I know I was when I was younger, but honestly, I think it's an excellent platform and it's the best bang for your money till this day. Me and my friend, actually, we both uh, decided that we want to challenge ourselves and buy, uh, you know, like upgrade our turbos. He had a 335i with blown turbos and I bought this T92 off him and I just wanted to do it as well with him. So I was like, let's, you know, why not? Let's go for it. Now keep in mind, my turbos were perfect. Mine were healthy, no wastegate rattle, it boosted fine, everything was good to go. One day we actually came across a Facebook page uh, which consisted of people who had Amazon and eBay turbos. That was very interesting. We looked deeper into this and it turns out like a lot of uh, people were running these turbos without any problems, majority of them at least. Uh, some obviously did have a lot of issues. After doing some research, I was like, you know what, let's go for it. So I, I went to Amazon, I read the reviews and they were excellent. You know, everybody's like, it runs great. I think there were one or two that were really bad. People were like, oh, my turbos were leaking or they were smoking right off the bat after 500 kilometers, things like that. You know, me and my friend, we basically call them Wuhan whistlers because they're from China, but they're pretty good quality. I think uh, brands like Pure Turbos or RB Turbos, they're just like Chinese turbos, but like they've, they just have a better process of, uh, you know, selecting out the defects in their assembly. One thing I want to mention is I didn't cheap out on, on the seals. The seals, I believe, was a very critical part because, you know, if you have leaks and stuff, then you're going to run into problems in the long run. So I actually went to FCP Euro. I bought the seals for the oil lines, the coolant lines, and the turbo manifold. Let's talk about the process. I honestly think this was one of the hardest jobs I've ever done on a car before, but I, I do think it was an, an amazing experience overall. It was definitely very, uh, very fulfilling for me, I would say, and it was very challenging and painful. It took me around one week to install the turbos, and uh, obviously because I like taking my time, my friend actually installed his turbos in three days, but I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna take my time, uh, do everything properly. I started by jacking up the car in my garage as high as I could, making sure everything is secure. I disconnected the battery and uh, things like that. Also created some space in my garage. I would say the hardest part is probably removing the subframe because um, it's such a big piece. You also have to disconnect the steering column, which was very difficult for me at least. Now, when the subframe actually came down, I think from there on it was a breeze. Trust me guys when I say this. I also want to say when you do put the upgraded turbos back in, make sure all the seals are put in properly, make sure everything is in properly clicked, torque everything to spec. That's very important. Uh, now with the upgraded turbos, I would also suggest uh, you upgrade your inlets because the stock inlets, as you know, are made out of plastic and they're very restrictive. Um, also, I would say while the subframe is down, I would change the oil pan gasket as well. It's just a couple bolts, pull it down, boom, put it back on. So the aftermath, let's talk about that. Once everything was put back together, I can't stress this enough. Make sure you guys prime the turbos, at least like crank it for like a minute or two. That's very important. There's a breaking period of 500 to 1000 kilometers. You can't go into boost too much. Just, just drive like a human being. Just don't go crazy right off the bat. It's kind of the same procedure as if you were doing like a clutch for example. Finally, when I started the car, I noticed a bunch of white smoke coming out of the turbo area. Now that's completely normal though. You guys don't need to stress out about that. That's very normal. If it continues, then that might be a problem. But uh, for, for me, that was just for like one or two days and it just the smoke completely went away. My first drive actually, this is very funny. <laughs> My car wasn't boosting at all. And um, I was tripping, man. Like I was like, holy shit. Like. was not boosting whatsoever. 
So that uh, that was pretty disappointing, but I managed to actually go back in the group and talk to a bunch of people. They were very helpful, amazing people, and they told me what was wrong. So basically, I needed an MHD with the JB4 setup I already had. So once I got MHD, I could run a base map, uh, base turbo hybrid map, and that allowed me to run 21 PSI. It kind of like um, bypasses the ECU and reduces all those safety features that JB4 implements. On top of that, my JB4 settings were also screwed up. There's a few things that I had to do and I'll tell you guys right now. One of the things was I had to disable FFRPM gain. You guys might see that soon. And then you also need to set up your TPMS number to whatever TPMS sensor you have. So if you have an N20 sensor, you have to put it to I think one or two. But in my case, I didn't have, I had the stock sensor, so make sure you just put that to zero. Finally, after tweaking everything, uh, my car, holy crap, it felt like a spaceship. Like there was so much torque and horsepower. Oh my God, I was blown out of the water. I was like, D this is a crazy, dangerous car. Here's my final thoughts. If you're installing eBay or Amazon turbos, it's definitely a hit and miss. Uh, do keep in mind they, they give uh, a one year warranty if you're buying those turbos so if something happens let's say then they'll replace it for you uh, with free of charge some people have witnessed their brand new turbos go out they start smoking the seals are bad or something within 500 to a thousand kilometers um, but then other people have put 30 to 40 thousand kilometers without a problem so it just depends on how you treat it there's a few things right if you warm up your car number one number two if how much abuse you're giving it on a daily basis number three if the installation process was done correctly so all these sorts of things uh, matter um, as far as turbo longevity goes. I also want to mention that when you do, let's say you get the turbos in the in the mail, make sure you check for shaft play, make sure you check for um, waste gate rattle <coughs> right off the bat, make sure you uh, measure the amount of vacuum that uh, the waste gate arm, actuator arm can actually hold. That's basically it guys. If you have any questions, feel free to message me or com comment down below. I will definitely get to you right away. Um, honestly, uh, my car is still running super strong. I'm only running 21 PSI. These turbos are capable of 29, 28 PSI, I think maybe even more. Um, and don't get me started on E85. Holy shit, that's a whole other animal. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.